Hello viewers, welcome back to Electrology. In today's video, we will understand how synchronization happens in a power plant. The main role in this process is played by the synchroscope, which control room engineers monitor closely. As the synchroscope needle moves and reaches the 12 o'clock position, the operator gives a close command to the GCB or generator circuit breaker. Now see, the generator is connected to the grid. This is how synchronization is done in a power plant. Now you may think, without checking parameters like voltage, frequency, phase angle and phase sequence, how can synchronization happen? If a control room engineer had to synchronize by manually checking all these parameters, mistakes would be inevitable. And a mistake here means the generator could burn out, causing a loss of crores of money. But with the help of the synchroscope, you can stay tension free. So let's understand the complete concept of synchronization today so that your theoretical understanding matches your practical knowledge. First, let's understand what synchronization is. It means connecting a generator with the grid by matching parameters like voltage, frequency, phase angle and phase sequence with the grid. Now, what is the grid? The grid is like an ocean where many loads and sources are connected. Just like adding or removing water from the ocean doesn't change its level significantly. Connecting a generator to the grid doesn't cause significant changes in the grid's voltage and frequency. So, you can consider the grid's frequency and voltage constant. Now, why do we consider these parameters like voltage, frequency and phase angle when connecting a generator to the grid? Imagine two generators are operating in parallel with a load connected to their terminals and you need to connect a third generator in parallel. The first two are running generators and the one you're connecting is the incoming generator. The voltage profile of the incoming generator should match the running generators. Otherwise, a circulating current will flow between them, which can be very high due to the low resistance of the generator's stator winding. Even a slight voltage difference can cause a large current to flow, potentially damaging the stator winding. Since the voltage produced by the alternator is AC, the voltage profile of the incoming generator must match the running generators, requiring similar parameters. If the voltage profile doesn't match when the breaker is closed, the voltage difference could damage the generator. So, how do we achieve this match? We use the turbine and AVR to align the generator's voltage profile with the grids. Now, about the phase sequence, how do you check it? The phase sequence is usually checked only at the beginning when the generator is first connected to the grid. After that, you only need to turn the breaker on and off without worrying about the phase sequence repeatedly. For voltage magnitude, two voltmeters are used one for the grid and one for the incoming generator. To monitor frequency and phase angle, we have the synchroscope. When the frequency and phase angle are almost the same, the synchroscope signals that you can close the GCB. Before diving deeper into the synchronization process, let's understand how to bring the generator's voltage profile to an exact match with the grids using the AVR and turbine. In a power plant, the generator's induced voltage depends on rotor speed and rotor flux. The frequency depends on rotor speed and rotor poles. In thermal plants, a two-pole generator is used, so we focus on rotor speed and rotor flux. Rotor speed is controlled by the steam input to the turbine and we adjust the rotor speed until the frequency matches the grid. This process also affects the induced voltage, which we can control using the excitation voltage to match the grid voltage. Before synchronizing, let's briefly discuss the layout. This is the generator transformer or GT, which steps up the generator's terminal voltage to levels suitable for grid transmission, like 220 kV or 400 kV. The generator's output voltage is usually around 15.5 kV or 21 kV. After the GT, two isolators are placed with a GCB between them. Isolators are for offload operations and circuit breakers are for on-load operations. For synchronization, first, the isolators are closed and then the close command is given to the GCB. But before closing the GCB, we need to check voltage magnitude and frequency using voltmeters and frequency meters on both the grid and generator sides of the GCB. 
The turbine is rolled at 3000 RPM to achieve 50 Hz frequency and the excitation voltage is adjusted to match the grid voltage. If the turbine speed is increased slightly, the synchroscope will rotate in the fast direction. When the needle reaches the 12 o'clock position, the operator closes the GCB to synchronize the generator with the grid. Once synchronized, the voltmeter and frequency meter readings on both sides will match, but the generator won't supply or absorb power. This is known as the floating condition. To supply power, the operator increases steam input and adjusts excitation voltage. Post-synchronization, increased steam input converts into active power output without changing frequency, and adjustments in excitation voltage affect reactive power, not output voltage. This process might seem complicated, but with practice, it becomes manageable. Timing is critical. Missing the synchroscope's 12 o'clock position can lead to significant damage. Repeated practice helps you gain confidence, making the process smoother in real-life applications. Synchronization is a crucial skill in power plant operations, and mastering it enhances your abilities as an engineer. In modern power plants, autosynchroscopes handle these adjustments automatically. Once parameters are matched and the synchroscope needle reaches 12 o'clock, it commands the GCB to close, connecting the generator with the grid. That's all for today. I hope this detailed explanation helps you understand the synchronization process better. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more informative content. See you in the next video. Until then, keep learning and stay curious.